in addition to weblogs which measure all this stuff, what you clicked on, where you came from, how long you're there, where you leave from, there's also all sorts of other methods of collecting data. Um, I have a few in the slide that you see here. One is, um, for example, software that runs resident on a computer. If your company really cares about what you do, it can run monitoring software that actually observes every action that you make. So this is different than a server which is collecting information about a particular website you visit. This is software that collects information about all the websites you visit. Now this is different a little bit than software that blocks you from going to websites. This is software that's actually monitoring you and it's kind of a little weird, a little scary. There's also um, things like the Google tool Toolbar. Um, I bet quite a few of you use the Google Toolbar. Did you know that the Google Toolbar also sends information about the, the sites that you visit back to Google? Um, it can give you all sorts of statistics. It's a very useful thing. It gives you the little Google search box all at the same time. But the Google Toolbar, at least if you allow it to, sends information about your usage of the internet back to Google. Now you hope that Google is using that for, um, for good aims, aims that you like rather than aims that you don't like, but I'll leave it up to you to decide um, if you like that and, and what to do about it. The point here is that a lot of information is collected by things like the Google Toolbar. Here's an, it's a very interesting application. The idea is um, a, a, a company can figure out what parts of the page are more used, what parts of the page are more significant by creating this thing called a heat map. And you can see a heat map in the diagram you see here, and you can see why it's called a heat map, right? It looks like this thing is on fire and the upper left corner is really blazing. That entire upper region is blazing. <coughs> Excuse me and the lower area is pretty cold, right? We go from red to yellow to blue to light blue, and the light blue areas are the least, the least what? They're not the least hot, even though it's called a heat map. They're the least looked at. They're the least observed. They're the least clicked on. They're the least um, noticed parts of the page. And so right from here, you can see a couple of things. First of all is that the top of the page is where all the action is, right? Now, we don't know from this heat map whether or not the top of the page is where all the action is because people tend to look there, or the top of the page is where all the action is because that's where all the good stuff is. But I can tell you from experience, the top of the page is where all the people look at because that's just what you do. When you go to a web page, you always scan the top of that page. So how did they collect this data? How did they, how did they know where people are looking? Well, a number of ways they can do that. If they have the people in, for, in, in their labs for experiments, they could actually observe their eye movements and they can see where your eyes look on the page. If they don't have that, they could observe things like the number of clicks you know, per, user, per 100 users. For every 100 users, they click you know, five times here, they click no times over here, and they can generate these heat maps that way. Another thing they can do is they can use um, uh, programs that run inside your browser, JavaScript programs, to observe your mouse movements. The browser is capable, actually, of observing where your mouse is on the screen and sending that information back to the server so the server can figure out where have you been looking. Okay, so we have server logs, really big way of collecting a lot of data about what you did on the web, what, what you did on the website. We have um, software that runs on the server itself, aside from server logs, that notes when you do significant things. And a company like Facebook is, is using software like that all the time to further figure out what people are doing on their site and to create, as you can imagine, a tremendous amount of data about what people are doing on their site. We have the idea of software that's running um, outside your browser that a company installs, and this is probably the least frequently used method. It's kind of onerous and people really don't like it, but it's there. And you can create software that can observe what you do and log all the things that you do um, outside of your browser. And then you can create software that runs inside your browser that allows you to, um, to log what people do, where their mouse goes, what they're observing, what they're clicking on, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so all of this amounts to a tremendous amount of data.